What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's KB and we locked in. Now let's jump into it. Today, we're gonna be talking about Mo3, the life he lived, the legacy he left behind, and everything in between. So without further ado, let's go. Mo3 is a rapper that came out of Dallas, Texas and had a meteoric rise in the world of hip hop in the late 2010s thanks to his melodic voice that he infused with street stories to make some of the best southern hip hop records to come out over the last decade. Mo3's voice and vocal cadence has been compared to what church singers sound like and it was this mixed with his emotional, painful, and aggressive lyrics that Mo3 spit that really set him apart from the rest of the crowd. Mo3 debuted in 2014 with the mixtape titled Shotters, and he would use every ounce of momentum this release gave him to rise to becoming one of the biggest and most popular rappers in not only the local area, but in the world. Mo3 has multiple platinum records, features from some of the realest rappers in the game, billions of streams, and a legacy that his family can be proud of. But in order for Mo3 to hit these heights in his career, there was a lot of pain, loss, and sacrifice that was endured. Everything from prison to homelessness, street beef to industry beef, poverty to riches, triumph and tragedy, Mo3's story has it all. But in order to understand it in its entirety, we need to go all the way back to the beginning of the story. Mo3, real name Melvin Noble Jr., was born May 31st, 1992 in McKinney, Texas, which is about a 50 minute drive to the north of Dallas. Mo3 grew up in mostly his mom's care, but Mo3 said on multiple occasions that his daddy was always there for him. So he had both parents growing up, they was just separated. Mo3 got eight siblings on his daddy's side and one on his mama's side, so he got a real big family. He said it was because of this that he stayed with his mama because over at his daddy's house, it was just too many people. Was your dad around? His mama stayed on Forest Lane in North Dallas, and his daddy mostly stayed at Oak Cliff, which is in Southwest Dallas. But when I was talking to people from Dallas about it, they don't really like to be considered South Dallas. And the OGs I spoke with in the area say South Dallas is a completely different place, but acknowledge the fact that the new generation have started breaking Oak Cliff off into sections, mainly North Oak Cliff and South Oak Cliff. Anyway, this is why in his music, you can hear Mo3 claim both areas, Forest Lane and Oak Cliff, even though they're in two different parts of the city. Oak Cliff is particularly infamous in the city historically and presently. It's currently maintaining a reputation for being one of the toughest areas in Dallas due to the high crime rates, violence, and poverty that plague the area. Oak Cliff is also where Lee Harvey Oswald fled after taking out President John F. Kennedy. Oak Cliff is also known for being the place where the notorious bank robbing duo Bonnie and Clyde met and were later buried, so you can see the historical significance of the area. Interstate 35 runs through Oak Cliff and is one of the main suppliers of narcotics found in the United States by way of Mexico and South America. If you drive through Oak Cliff in 2022, you can see that the Blood Gang has a heavy influence over the area. And while Oak Cliff has its downsides, it also produced some top tier Texas talent with dozens of artists popping up from the area. Rappers like Trap Boy Freddy and Yella Beezy, both of who will play a bigger part in this story later, but Mo3 is by far the biggest rapper to ever come from the area. Mo3 had talent from an early age, saying in his No Jumper interview that his mama used to take him to church and make him sing because of how good he was, and adding that when he was with his dad kicking it, his dad used to make him rap for his friends. Mo3's dad was also a rapper, although not a very popular one, so it was natural for him to want to see his son follow in his footsteps. No talent? No, I'm not, like, it's, it's heavy scent. Like, mm. my mama had me in the church. Like, my daddy had been rapping. My mama was singing, my daddy rapping, so I sang again and rap. So it was like, mm. it's always been, it's always been natural, like, from the go, like, way before we even got in the studio. I'm talking about late nights. Mama got her company coming to the house. She want to show out. Come, boy, come here and sing that one song for, sing it for my friends. Mama, come on, man. Then my daddy, late night hanging with him in the apartments. He got his partners around. Watch my son make a little rap. Go on, speak this. 
<laughs> no move. So it's like you were very encouraged. Yeah, it's like I ain't never been shy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna do it. I ain't, yeah. Oh no, nah, I ain't shy. Mo 3's brother, Cole Gotti, added this. Dude, like we was doing the church. Like my mom used to make us go sing when we was young and she'd make us stand up in church and sing and but like three would be the up there smiling and singing and I'd be the on the side just like, you know, I can do it. Yeah. But I ain't really just trying to be doing it. But like my mama sang, daddy rap, my, my big cousins, they rap, like we've been rapping for a minute. Mo3 got his name from both sides of his family. When he was at his mom's, people used to call him Lil Mo. And when he was at his daddy's, they used to call him Lil 3. Like I said, his real name is Melvin Noble Jr. And his daddy's street name was Third. So that's why they called him Lil 3 when he was over at his daddy's house. When he got older, he smashed the two names together, Lil Mo and Lil 3, creating Mo 3. Why did they Mo 3? Uh, my daddy named Third. It's kind of my daddy, Triple L Cool Mayor, that's third, you know what I'm saying? So I'm his junior. I'm little three, you know what I'm saying? Now I got a little three, now I got my son, he a little three, but at the time, I was a little three to my daddy because his name third, and uh, on my mama's side, they called me Lil Mo. So it's Lil Mo. I'm over there with my, my mama people, and them is, oh yeah, my cousin, that's hey, Lil Mo, that's hey, Lil Mo, you know what I'm saying? And I'm over here. When I'm thugging them in the summertime with my dad and them side, yeah, little three, woo I just, it's Mo three. While living with his mom, times got rough for three and his family though. He said there would be times where his mom would be working two jobs and the lights and other utilities would still be getting shut off. Despite the hardships three and his mom faced, his mom never let it bring her down. In fact, according to three, his mom was a neighborhood mom. If y'all don't know what that is, let me explain. All the people that grew up in the bottom like me, well, I already know this, but basically, in every hood, there's always that one mom that no matter what, you could rely on. They be having the candy, the soda pops, dinner, all that. If you ain't got no place to stay, you can always sleep there. That's what kind of mom Mo3 had. Just a big hearted person who even at her lowest was willing to help the people around her out. While this structure sounds nice, Three described it as his mom, him, and like 10 of his homies trying to stay in their two-bedroom apartment. So much for staying at his mom's because his dad's was overcrowded. He even said there would be times where he would get out of school and by the time he made it to his apartment, it would be like three or four of his homies that had done beating to his own. Three's parents did the best they could with him when he was growing up, but he would eventually find himself in the streets, becoming associated with the local gangsters and ending up in some serious legal trouble. Even with all the talent in the world, Three just couldn't keep himself away from trouble. According to Mo3 himself, as early as the age of 12, he had jumped off the porch and obtained his first blicky, saying that he stole it from his big cousin. It's kind of funny though, because he said he didn't even steal the clip with it. He just took the heat. So he was walking around sticked up with no clip, just to flex and say he had a blicky on him. Damn, bruh, that's how you know you from the trenches. After getting his first heat at 12, things would start to go downhill quick. In fact, this situation ended with Three's mom calling his dad to tell his dad about it. Three's dad, in an effort to dissuade Three from going down this road, reported it to the police just to teach him a lesson because at that age, getting involved with the streets can be detrimental. Three ain't go to jail or anything for this, just got a little slap on the wrist, which in hindsight 2020 probably was the worst thing. Because less than two years after that, when he was only 14, he was arrested for aggravated robbery and officially locked up. He did six months in a juvenile detention center for this before being released on an ankle monitor. It didn't take long for Three to find himself in even more trouble though, committing another aggravated robbery. At this point, the judge was tired of Mo 3's behavior and put him in what's called placement, which is basically a group home. Once in placement, Three saw himself being shipped around the state of Texas to almost every facility they had for juveniles, but eventually he was released. Again though, this freedom didn't last long because at the age of 17, he was arrested again, this time for four different aggravated robberies. He said he was only responsible for two of them, but took two additional charges for one of his homies, making the total charge count four. For this, Three was facing 45 years in a correctional facility. He ended up getting a plea deal where his sentence would only be 10 years for everything combined. He did two of the 10 years and was released at 19 for good behavior on parole. This situation gets even crazier than that though, because in order for Mo3 to get the plea deal for the 10 years he had, he had to hire an attorney. 
At this time, he still wasn't a rapper, so him and his family ain't had no money like that. He said his mom lost her house, her car, and even her job over this situation. Becoming homeless, also she could pay for Three's lawyer fees. That's tragic. On top of all this, his best friend that he took the two charges for ended up snitching on him. Mo3 can be heard referencing this on his hit song titled Everybody. Ironically, it was this time in prison that led Mo3 down the road to taking his music seriously. After getting locked up, his daddy came to visit. He said during this visit, his pops convinced him to take music seriously, noting that he had a real talent and that Mo3 should be using it to his advantage. Mo3 took this discussion to heart, but for the two years he was locked up, there was nothing he could do about it. Right. When did you actually make a real decision to start taking the rap seriously? When I was in the cell, matter of fact, visitation. Mm. Visitation, man, it's crazy. They asked me this question. I've been telling the same story five years. Like every every interview, I tell the same story. It's like my daddy came to visit me before I caught chain TDC. And it was also like when you get out. Instead of doing what you're doing, rap about it. Like, rap about it, what you mean? Your dad. Yeah, he was like, you know, you know, you, you can rap. I was like, yeah, what that mean, though? Know? Mm. Put your life in the in the music. Rap about it. You ain't got to do it no more. Just rap about it. I like, man, that shit don't work. What that's going to get me? Rapping about it. He was like, it's better to rap about it than do it because you ain't hurting nobody. Had you never really even thought about the prospect of you actually being a real deal? Nah, I ain't think I was gonna be here, man. Really? I swear to God, we here, man. I swear, like I ain't, I ain't wake up and say, man, I'm gonna be a. I used to want to be the hot boys when I was little, you know what I'm saying, like mm. cash money. But I ain't, you know, that's when I was little. You get what I'm saying? But like when I grew up, by the time I hit 14, I don't know, I was out here in the streets, so it was like all it was fantasy, right? Like, that wasn't real. Like we out here, we struggling. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here on Forest Lane of D. You understand me? My mom working two jobs. Mm. The lights is out every now and then. You understand me? So it's like we 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 doing what we got to do to survive. You understand me? So you know I'm running the streets here at night. So it's like that rap is not even. That's not like that was like a, a hobby. Like it, it was like I don't smoke weed. So that was like getting high to me. Like mm. I'm just go you know, make a song. Before we get into how Mo3 came up and how he took over the rap game, we need to understand the history of music where 3 is from because that'll paint a clearer picture of how his music became so successful and how it stood out when played next to other Texas music. Texas has had three major appearances in the rap game. First, back in the day, rappers like Nemesis appeared on the scene, dropping songs that mirrored East Coast sounds. More specifically, the bars mirrored New York style lyrics and cadences and the way they built their lyrics. This was fine because at the time, New York was where hip hop was originating and there really was no other sound. But as hip hop spread, it went to the West Coast and they seen the boom and Texas seen new rappers coming out like the DOC that mirrored the West Coast vibe. These artists and groups were big in their own rights for Texas back in the day and they were pivotal to the development of the Texas rap culture, but it lacked an original sound and it piggybacked off of other trends. However, this wasn't the case for forever. Texas would eventually find its own style with people like the Ghetto Boys, Big Tug, DJ Screw, Pimp C, Bun B, and more in the late 90s and early 2000s. It all really started popping off pretty hard in Texas when an entrepreneur named Jay Prince formed his record label named Rap A Lot Records and started signing and promoting rappers from the area. After this is when we seen people like UGK come into the picture. UGK was a two-man rap group that included Pimp C and Bun B. UGK had countless hit records, and between them and the Ghetto Boys, they were able to successfully build a foundation for rappers from the area to stand on if they ever wanted to make a come up. DJ Screw and DJ Michael 5000 Watts popped up on the scene, producing multiple Texas rappers under their screwed up click and switch the house brands in the late 90s. DJ Screw is credited as being responsible for a bunch of Texas legends rise in popularity. Rappers like Zero, Lil Kiki, Big Hawk, Big Mo, Lil Flil, Big Pokey, and more. DJ Screw and his screwed up click were obviously on top of the game at this point in Texas rap history. Switch House, which was headed by Michael 5000 Watts, also produced a lot of talent, but they didn't really get much traction until in the late 1990s. 
after DJ Screw had passed away and Swisher House basically took over for a minute and pushed Texas rap forward into the 2000s. Swisher House is credited with being responsible for rappers like Mike Jones, Paul Wall, Slim Thug, Chameleon Air, and more. Texas really seen an increase in popularity with the release of Still Tipping, a single from Mike Jones, Paul Wilder, and Slim Thug. This was an absolute banger when it came out, and if you haven't heard it, you need to go hear it because it's a real piece of history. And this song took Texas's culture into the mainstream. There was also other groups and companies that contributed to the growth of Texas rap music like Crown Boss, South Circle, SPM, and more artists, but you get the general gist. This is how it all started. A lot of people tend to think of Houston's rap history when they think of Texas rap music because it had the most attention, but there's another area that has produced a lot of talent. The DFW, or Dallas-Fort Worth area, also known as the Triple D, is home to rappers like Twisted Black, Tom Tom, Charlie Boy, Mr. Lucci, Mr. Pookie, Big Tuck, DeRoe, Lil Will, and a bunch of other artists. The 2000s was the era of swanging music, diamond grills, and lean in your double cup. But after it left the eye of the mainstream, a new type of music would start to become popular in the area. This music was called Dallas Boogie Music, which was basically just dance songs that a lot of people have heard like Stanky Leg, Ice Cream Paint Job, and other songs like that. There was a lot of traction in this area in the late 2010s, and we seen DJs like DJ D-Real popping up who put together compilation tapes of various artists in the Texas area, distributed the CDs to different stores across the country, and in the process, gave Texas rap artists a real opportunity to gain some notoriety. The boogie era started to slow down around 2013 or 2014, and Dallas seen a new type of music starting to take over the airways, gangsta music. This was also around the time that Mo3 was released from prison and decided it was time to jump into the rap game head first. When Mo3 was sentenced to 10 years in prison, his daddy visited him and told him that when he got out, he needed to use his vocal talent to rap and Mo3 did exactly that when he got out. Once released, he recorded a bunch of songs. Admittedly, he didn't intend on putting these together as a project, but instead was gonna release the tracks one by one. He started by posting his first official song to YouTube called Hold Your Tongue on August 14, 2013. This song was a remake of an older classic Dallas song by Big Chief Mr. Lucci and Mr. Pookie called Half Stepping. Mo3, who at the time was rapping under the name Mo3 Badass, seen very little attraction on the official release of this song, but followed it up by releasing nine more songs over the next two months. This included this homemade video of him rapping a song titled I'm Sorry, where he apologizes to the world for being a real one. Even though these tracks created little attraction for three, this would all change when he dropped a music video for his song Hold Your Tongue that almost instantly started running the numbers up, with it sitting at almost 10 million views as of the time of me recording this video. This was three's first taste of virality. But as usual, everything that glitters ain't gold. While 3 had these records released, he was still struggling to make ends meet, saying this in a Say Cheese interview. I had this song, Hold Your Tongue, and I had the viral video, Woot the Woot. You know what I'm saying? I got the fame, but I'm homeless. You know what I'm saying? It was around this time that Mo3 met someone that would help him take everything to the next level, and this person was Rainwater. Rainwater was known around Texas as a show promoter and an artist manager, but to keep it real, he ain't had the best of reputations to start out with, with a lot of artists that he worked with in the past accusing him of stealing their money and ripping them off. Before Mo3, like before Mo3 Rainwater, you were known, like in the city. Knew who Rainwater was, but when he mentioned your name, it was never good. It was, it was, he's a janky party promoter. He steals money. He puts up fake shows and and, and a lot of people blame you. They, they feel like you ruined the dance era because you over a lot of artists. Let's let's really like talk about that. Every artist from the dance era gonna say I made money. Now, the people that was behind them didn't like me. It was a little person running around telling they artists the real situation was going on. I, I made them a whole unit. You know, it was one of them things where people would say you would take majority of the show money and give them pieces. No, no, no. How true is that? No, no. What I was doing was... I, I made them a whole unit. Everybody was in a group then. Everybody was in a group and, and, and they wasn't making no damn money. 
every artist from the dance area is gonna say I made money. And I take my thousand off top. If you charge three thousand, I charge them four thousand. Take my thousand off top. But it's four y'all in a group. Got to split three thousand. I made more money than the whole group. So they feel like I took majority of the money because I made more money than. But this didn't seem to be the case once Rainwater linked up with Mo Three. Rainwater got familiar with Three after hearing one of his songs through a friend. He said when he heard the song, he instantly had a vision for Mo 3's future, calling him up on the phone and telling him he could be the next Pretty Ricky or R. Kelly. This is because the song he heard was one of Mo 3's slower songs that he made for the females, but 3 quickly cleared it up by letting Ryan Water know he ain't just a singer, he a rapper too, and started playing more of the songs he had so that Ryan Water could hear them. Rainwater instantly let 3 know he had to put these songs on a CD and get them out in the streets. This is where 3's first mixtape shot us started to become a reality. While shooting his video for Hold Your Tongue, Mo3 had also done a photo shoot and got some photos that he never used out of it. And these photos are what they ended up using for the cover of Shotta's. Mo3 also met another person around this time that would help him elevate named DJ D Real. He met DJ D Real through a producer named Young Thuggin after they made a song called Say My Name. And through Rain's connections, they were able to press up over 10,000 CDs, which they started selling on the street. Like how long after rap do you think you see your first real check? Like real check? What, what you call real check? Anything over like 500 to 1,000. Oh, uh, I bought that Porsche, I have CDs. I bought that Porsche 911, I'm selling CDs. Mm -hmm. I sold the block up with that shot of crazy. I bought a Porsche 911 out there, man, man. Three days, in three days, I'm selling CDs, standing in front of the door, selling CDs. And this is off Ardelia, yeah. Forrest and Ardelia? Yeah, man. How yeah. many CDs do you think you you sold? In all, uh, when? Like, in all as far as like- Like, I'm gonna say like my 2013 period. to like 7, 18, cause I feel like the CD era is kinda over. It is over. Uh, It's, it's over the thousands. It's over like the, the ten thousands. Like, so you feel like you sold over ten thousand just in that section? Yeah, nah, not not in this section. Cause I went all the way to Dallas. Yeah. You gotta understand, Big T, uh, Brew, Mom and Pop Store, Fort Worth, Arlington, everybody, not, uh, East Texas, West Texas, Oklahoma, everybody start buying CD. We was at FedEx. I ain't know how to do a FedEx yet. I had people with me. Hey, FedEx, 100 CDs here, FedEx, 500 CDs here. Ooh, come help me do that. Like, where you FedExing to? Oklahoma, East Texas, you know what I'm saying? Louisiana, they call them. Like, they want these CDs. So, like, I sold a lot of CDs everywhere. Like. What's phenomenal about this is that during the time they were selling these CDs, the internet was booming and almost all music was online. CDs were really a thing of the past at this point. But despite this, he was still able to sell out all of his CDs, making over $100,000 in just over three days. A life-changing amount of money. But three, spent almost all of it on one purchase when he bought a Porsche 911. Luckily for him though, this wouldn't matter in the long run because he was about to see a major boom in popularity. That's because along with selling CDs themselves, DJ D Real was also putting Mo3 on his compilation albums and sending them out to stores nationwide, which allowed 3 to gain even more of a following in the real world. After the success of Shotta's, Mo3 hit the rap game hard. From 2014 through the end of 2015, Mo3 released 9 songs on YouTube. This culminated in him dropping his second mixtape, Shot Is Reloaded, on November 25th, 2015, which had 22 songs in total on it. Some of the biggest records on this project consisted of his singles Take Em To Church, which currently sits at 2.6 million views, All The Way Down, which sits at about 7.3 million views, Letter To My Mama, which has 8.1 million views, and his biggest record at the time, Gangsta Love, which sits at about 8.1 million views as well. This mixtape was the definition of success, and 3 and his team did the exact same thing they did with the first mixtape and got CDs pressed up and shipped out to stores. But it was around this time that 3 would learn a hard lesson about the music industry. According to 3, his friend and business acquaintance, DJ D Real, was pulling some shady stuff in the background. 3 said that after pressing up the CDs and sending them out to stores, he started getting calls from merchants that said they wanted more CDs to sell. Now this seems like a good call to get, right? Well, what if the person that's calling you to order more CDs they've sold out of is someone you've never sold a CD to before? That's exactly what was happening here. 
Three said in an interview with Say Cheese that DJ D Real was taking his songs, burning them onto his own CDs without Mo 3's permission, and sending those CDs to states and stores that Mo 3 had never heard of to sell them. The problem was that because DJ D Real was burning these CDs himself, Three never knew they existed. And when they would sell these burnt CDs, DJ D Real was pocketing the money, thinking that Three would never find out about it. But Mo3 did find out, and the two had a major falling out. DJ D Real went on Facebook and started slandering Three's name for weeks on end, really trying to make him look bad. But this ended terribly for DJ D Real because Mo3 would eventually run into him outside of Big T Shopping Center, a shopping center that he frequented in the Dallas area, and Three came with the same energy he has on his songs, but in real life. The whole incident was captured in this footage right here. I'm live out here, Big T, man. You understand me, man? Boy, D Real. You have missed the maker status about me. been making a thousand statuses about uh, D Real. You've been, making a, you been, you been making a thousand statuses. You know what I'm saying? I'm Hollywood. Get on. You made me. Riley flies. I don't, the rest of you. Walking with this ambassador for this. You know, it's only about time to bump it to y'all. See, I ain't, I ain't even, I ain't even take it that with him. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, boy, diamonds on the way. Not mother off until you finish, man. That's what I'm talking about. See, now I'm that gang. See, pull up on some gang. You know, now it's all. Now I apologize. Nah, bro, you running my name, fam. You running my name. Why is you running my name? I ain't nowhere running your name. Nowhere. Nobody, nobody catch me running be real name. Say somebody be real, I go. Mixtape. I ain't talking to this. They go mixtape. Ah, oh, damn, they really he screenshot running back to his running through the mud, through the grass, through the backyard, through the trenches, through everything. And you ain't gotta do all that, fam. For real. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Now he's the alma. Why am I? Why am I? I ain't doing that to you. Nah, he just a new man. I don't want, yeah, 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 we can get that in a minute. I'm, I'm handling something right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah he's a new man. Nigga just said I was a ho nah, live, but you know, he pull up on like this, man, you know, they just, he on Facebook running my name. I'm all type of Hollywood on the book. Mo3 on, Mo3 woo the woo, he switched up. He got on woo woo. Why you doing me like that, baby? Why you doing me like that? Why you doing me like that? All right, now he don't want to talk. But he gonna get on Facebook and run my name. Do you want him to talk? Dude, he need to be talking. I need yeah, to know. Man. My friends need to like know. Run that shit on the book. Stop getting up. Stop getting up. Sit down, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I ain't got no problem with him. He got a problem with me. Why you got a problem with me for, dude? We good. We, ah, we good. You gonna go talk about me again? You gonna let my three came up down some Clearly, Three wasn't about to let nothing slide, and his homie who told DJ D Real to sit down even made some merch about it, making this all the more embarrassing for DJ D Real. Mo Three had this to say about it: "What's up with this viral video going on around? You know, um, with you and DJ D Real? First of all, <clears throat> social media gonna make whatever, whatever they want to make it out of. You know what I'm saying? Like, what nobody bullying no D Real? I look like bullying a DJ." The f that ain't even, that ain't even in my genre. Like, when nobody bullying D-Real, D-Real, y'all know my old DJ, you know, uh, D-Real, the day of my mixtape release party, D-Real stopped answering the phone. Then he come back with some excuse like, ah, my computer messed up, and woo woo you gonna help me pay for it, and woo all this other shit. I had to go pay DJ Duffy, you know what I'm saying? And this was a long time ago when Child of Fred came out, so it's like, he been doing shit, but been letting it ride, been letting it make it, so like, how y'all seen it? I don't know how y'all seen it, how y'all took it. <laughs> Wasn't nobody out there bullying them. And had nobody, no security pulling up on them. And the this was in front of Big T. Everybody and their mama was out there. I was in Big T giving them a chain, man. Kyle D-Real, like D-Real, where you at, bro? I, I, I just came out of Jim City. No, you didn't D-Real. I come outside, I'm by myself. My partner that y'all seen on there, that's my partner. He walked up later on. It's like I walked outside, 
we chopping it up, you know. I let him, you know, plead his case. You know, everybody know d real been running my name for a month straight. Talking about I left him out. Talking about I'm Hollywood. He got in my inbox. Telling me, man, man, d real talking about you Hollywood. You got on, you switched up, and he made you, and he the reason you hired. And d real ain't telling y'all I was stealing my three money. Why you doing me like that, baby? Why you doing me like that? Why you doing me like that? All right, now you don't want to talk. I was stealing and burning CDs and taking them to stores, knowing I ain't had no business doing it. Why you doing me like that? Stealing all that money, taking it, lying, tucking it. Stop getting up. Stop getting up. Sit down, bro. Yeah. Getting phone calls about it, talking about, nah, I, I, I don't know nothing about that, bro. I, I, nah, you ain't telling that part, D-Real. You, you, you ain't telling that part I, how you was stealing. You was taking it. You taking it from my family, fam. That's how I pay my bills. DJ D-Real responded by saying this. Yeah, so 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 when Mo3 started to, 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 to bubble, that was that was all off of me. That was me that, that, that did that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. That was me that did that yeah. He was He was crawling when he met me. He was crawling. When you got with me, we started we started to jog a little bit. We started to jog a little bit. He was crawling when I met him. He got with me, I turned I turned them up. I turned you up. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. When y'all seen that video, y'all what y'all caught was Mo3 was trying to embarrass me. And then come and checking me, that's cause I was finna get up. I was finna get up. I I, I, I ain't wanna sit down, but yeah, they threatened me. They threatened me, so I was like, what I was told, the video that y'all seen, that was supposed to be on some black man shit. That was supposed to be. Did that video ever post that? that no, no, no. Cause no one never seen that video. No, no, y'all ain't never seen that. Yeah, I don't think that ever Y'all ain't never seen that, cause that's like three or four minutes with him, you know, he checking yeah. me on camera, blah, blah, blah. Okay, la, la, la. Yeah. Yeah, y'all ain't never yeah, seen yeah, that. Y'all ain't never seen that. that. Uh -uh. As far as the, the money situation, was there any type of money it was that no, was it, made no. behind Mo 3's back that you didn't, you know, came up off of that you want to speak about. Yeah, Mo 3 made some money. Yeah, he made money. No, I'm on your end though. On my end, what you mean? Like as far as I didn't made this off of Mo 3 CDs, and you know, he basically was saying that man, the dudes out there selling my CDs. Oh no, nah, I was never them. selling no CD. I was never selling no CDs without his consent. Yeah. Mo 3 eventually just stopped talking about it all together, saying this in an interview. I, I can't even bring you up to speed, cause like, like I say, man, you know, I hear so much hate and. Like, I know y'all hear it and know y'all see it, yeah. but I do also know y'all see, ain't nothing happened to me yet. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm out here every day, I swear to God, like, ain't nothing, ain't nothing happened to me, man. And half the that be capping, I see these like in real life, like, I can't yeah. never respond to no I can't get, I can't let no get no cloud on my name, I can't put no on, man, you know, I can't turn it up, you know. At the end of the day, I be high, high, high in that situation, it's like, ain't nothing happened to me, literally. And almost I'm in this message looking back on it. And look, I'm not here to say who's telling the truth or not, but that's the situation and that's what happened. And even though you would think that the machine that was propelling Mo3's career forward crumbling would be an L, it didn't slow Mo3 down at all. He continued to apply pressure, rocking shows and gearing up for his next release. After dropping shot as reloaded, Mo3 would find himself linking up with his favorite rapper, Lil Boosie. On May 2nd, 2016, Boosie had a meet and greet at the Red Bird Mall in Oak Cliff, the same place Mo3 is from, and Mo3 just happened to be in the building. On top of having his meet and greet book, Boosie was also in Dallas, quote unquote, looking for a rapper to sign. And he had heard about Mo3 through his brother TQ, so when Mo3 showed up, the two quickly hit it off, and it was all captured in this video. TQ, tell me you want to sign, huh? Say you you gonna make me some money. Oh my, my big brother say. Let's get to say you selling out shows around here. I gotta check you out, man. I gotta check. Let's get us a flick, man. I gotta. Yeah. I ain't heard. You know, TQ called me today. Say he do open it up for you. You thinking about signing? It ain't nobody. Yeah. That's what I need. I need me all this from Dallas. Yeah, when I ain't getting the money, he be getting all the money. Yeah, <laughs> man. Nah, what? What? Yeah, we live in the city, man. You know what I'm saying? Young yeah. coming, man. Real talk, man. Oh, Bad play, man. You know we gonna bring the city out. Real street. All the way. Like that, All the way. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, man. Let them know, man. Let them know, man. Hey, bro. Yeah.
Yeah, they say selling out a show. My brother called me morning like, gotta see this from Dallas, man. This got love. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna be checking him out tonight. I'm gonna do this, man. We better be signing this morning. 100. Just like that. No, it's just like that, man. 100. Two months later, and Boosie called Mo3 up and offered to fly him out to his mansion in Atlanta where they would do some work together and talk about the possibility of Boosie signing Mo3. Mo3 arrived at Boosie's mansion and the two recorded their song, What She Said, which the audio version alone has racked up more than 2.4 million views on YouTube alone. Another interesting thing that happened here was, well, word on the streets was that Lil Boosie had signed Mo3. But the truth is, during this process, he decided not to sign Mo3 and allowed him to stay independent while still giving him that coveted Boosie co-sign. Shortly after their meetup, and Mo3 was ready for his next mixtape titled Four Indictments, a reference to the four charges he caught at 17. On October 31st, 2016, he dropped Four Indictments, and the mixtape had 19 songs on it and was hosted by DJ Drama. I'm sure having DJ Drama host this mixtape felt like a real seal of approval for three, cause back in the day, getting a DJ Drama hosted mixtape and getting that Gangster Grill stamp meant you was on fire. The album wasn't necessarily a high performing album, but in the Dallas area, it was what was popping when it dropped. Plus, the features from Boosie also helped push Mo3 into the Louisiana area, opening him up to a new market, and 3 would definitely capitalize on it. Spending the next 5 months or so recording and releasing music videos for the songs on the mixtape. Another cool thing he did was, over this 5 month period, he allowed his brothers to upload their music on his HSM YouTube channel, allowing them to utilize his platform to get careers in the rap game as well. Anyway, I just thought that was dope, and it's a trend that he continued up until the day he died, letting his people post on his YouTube channel. But to make a good situation better, 3 also seen himself signing a record deal with Epic Records, making him an official major label artist. Now after this, 3 would really level up. He dropped an Instagram live video where he sung over a Sierra beat titled And I, and this clip went viral. 3 hit the studio, recorded an official version of it, got a music video directed for it, and dropped an official version of it on August 2nd, 2017, about a year after his last mixtape. This song currently sits at over 18 million views, marking the first time 3 passed the 10 million view milestone on a single video. This also sparked the And I Challenge, where a bunch of people recorded themselves singing over the Sierra beat and telling their own stories just like 3 did. He kept it pushing by dropping his song True Story accompanied by a music video that has also done 20 million views just after dropping the And I Challenge. This song True Story also passed 10 million views marking the second time he passed this mark and he did it back to back with And I and then with this song True Story. There is some history behind this song and things that were happening in the background but we'll touch on that a little bit later in the story but just know that there's a story behind this song that caused Mo3 a lot of trouble and because of the situation his label Epic that he had just signed to stopped wanting to work with him and their relationship deteriorated after only two months into being signed. He eventually bought his way out of his contract and by October of 2017 he was back to releasing music though. Even though he didn't have a major label backing him this time, Mo3's numbers never did go back down. He continued to grow, and in 2018, he was set to have a phenomenal year. He dropped a couple songs, like this one over Gucci Gang, and some features between January of 2018 and the end of February. But in March, Mo3 will release the project that catapulted him past the local level and into the spotlight nationwide. On March 15, 2018, Mo3 dropped Shot as 3.0, and this project features some really big songs, like the original version of Everybody, Can I Vent, and Preach. It only had one feature on the entire thing, and that was Moneybag Yo on their song Numbers. Also, at this point in 3's career, he was bringing in around $10,000 for every show that was booked, and he was booked up almost every single night, Monday through Sunday. For the next year, 3 released 16 songs and shot over 10 music videos to go with them, including the original video for his song Everybody. But on January 14, 2019, Mo3 would release a song that would cause his whole career to go parabolic. 3 released a remix to his song Everybody that featured Lil Boosie. He uploaded a video for it to his HSM YouTube channel and also had Datpiff uploaded on their YouTube channel and this song took off immediately. 
Since its release, it has garnered over 60 million views on Mo3's channel and over 100 million views on that Piff channel, making about 200 million views total he's got from this song. This song was officially certified gold on January 26, 2022 by the RIAA, marking the first time Mo3 would get a plaque for one of his songs and also the first time he passed 100 million views on a single video. Mo3 had officially made a come up and with numbers like that, it was clear that he was headed towards superstar status. It seemed that things couldn't get much better, but for all the good that was taking place in his life, there was an equal amount of bad. He was able to make it as a rapper, but behind the scenes, there was a lot of things going on and happening that would eventually lead to the tragic end of it all. At this point, Mo3 has seen nothing short of a phenomenal amount of success, but there are factors other than the music that was helping propel Mo3 to the forefront of Texas rap. From the start, Mo3 had been affiliated with the streets, and when he blew up, that didn't change. When Mo3 first dropped, Boogie Music was on its way out, and Mo3 and a few other rappers were bringing that new gangster sound to Dallas that it had been saying it wanted. However, when he did eventually start releasing music, not everyone in the city was on board and supportive of his movement. This caused several different incidents to take place that would turn the city up and lead to Mo3 beefing with what felt like everyone that was inside the borders of the state. Like I said, there were several other rappers on the come up around this time. This included Go Yayo, Trap Boy Freddy, and Yellow Beezy, and these names will become synonymous with beef that formed between them and Mo3 during Mo3's come up. For now, let's take a quick look at Go Yayo. He first popped up on the scene in 2014 with his song Don't Trip. While 3 was making his come up, so was Go Yayo, and the only difference was Go Yayo's career took off first. When he dropped his song, Boom God. Go Yayo had beef with everyone in Fort Worth and was really causing problems in the rap scene because remember, before this, everybody was doing dance music and pretty much got along, but Go Yayo was causing all sorts of problems. Anyway, Go Yayo at the time was the bigger artist coming out of the state. Him and 3 were cool at first, but just like he was beefing with everybody else, it didn't take long for Yayo and 3 to get beef of their own and their relationship started to sour. Word on the streets was that Yayo was jealous of 3's success, and this could be seen in a video where Go Yayo was performing at the music factory and Mo3 was also scheduled to perform. Mo3 took the stage when it was his time, but Yayo refused to pass him the mic, continuing to perform for the crowd and even crowd surfing. Trap Boy Freddy was also on stage during his performance. Apparently, this is where the bad blood between Go Yayo and Mo3 started, but it wasn't nothing too serious at first. In fact, a little while later, a rapper from Dallas named Cuban Doll set up a studio session where 3 and Go Yayo was set to be there at the same time. When Yayo got there, him and 3 recorded a song, and then Yayo hopped on the phone with another guy named Na Na who was asking to speak to 3. Now, Mo3 has blood affiliations, and this guy has ties to the Crips, so when he tried to get 3 on the phone, he declined. Apparently, Nana told Go Yayo that when he seen Mo3, he was gonna slap this out of him. Couple days ago, couple days ago, Yayo pulled up at the studio, uh, Cuban dog. Me, Cuban, and Yayo, we just did a little track real quick. It was supposed to be some low-key little friction between me and Yayo, you understand me, you know? But it really wasn't nothing when it came down to it. So, you know, y'all seen the status like, what, what, about day four yesterday? Uh, now nah, nah, I say, yeah, yo, I'm out three, y'all some blah, 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 blah. I'm finna tell y'all why that happened. So, boom. Yeah, yo, tell me. Yeah, yo, tell me. Now nah, nah, I say he was gonna slap you on. So I'm like, we at the studio. So I say, Nana nah, say he was gonna slap me. I say, Nana nah, nah, couldn't have said that. After that session was over, three felt some type of way about it. Even going as far as to claim Cuban Doll and Go Yayo was trying to set him up. This created a fallout between the two artists, but it didn't stay localized between the two. Instead, it split the Triple D into basically two sides those who were rocking with Yayo and those who were rocking with Mo3. Trap Boy Freddy said he got dragged into it when 3 asked him to stop speaking to and being cool with Go Yayo, a demand Trap Boy Freddy didn't even entertain, saying this in a Say Cheese interview. If you cool with me how you say you is, or if it's, you know what I mean, that's what you're supposed to do, bro. Right. Like, if you wants to ask me about a question, you can ask me about any one of your 
You know what I mean? Mm. The first thing I'm gonna say, yeah. Right, Even like if I ain't hurt. Right, like see now, me and him, we were cool money. You see what I'm saying? That's my dog. We still be cool right now. If he go say what he said and go be like him, what he what he really meant or however he meant it. Yeah. If it wasn't nothing towards me, you gotta say that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, no, that was my. And I vouch for him on every level. So if it ain't the same, it ain't that. But me and that talk shit. Yeah, yeah, yo. Shit. Him and yeah, yo. yeah. He wanted me to be just that he was bad at me for still talking to Yayo, so that's what it was. Period. I ain't gotta stop talking to nobody. Yeah, what is? Not only did Trap Boy Freddy refuse to stop speaking with Yayo, he also ramped this beef up to the next level when he dropped a song titled Six Pick that had a bunch of artists on it from Dallas. Most notably was Go Yayo and Yella Beezy. Apparently, Three felt some type of way about Go Yayo being included on the track when he wasn't even asked to perform on it. Pick six the record, that is yours. Yeah, that's mine. Okay, how'd you come up with who'd you pick? I mean, first it was me, you know what I mean? It was me, Yayo, and uh, me, Yayo, and Running, it was me, Yayo, and Running by myself. And then Sleazy pulled up, so I tell Sleazy, I'm gonna put your first one or two. Then uh, Yellow, then Lil CJ too. Then I called it Six Pick just because of the there was six people on there, you know what I mean? And that lottery, I know it was something with the lottery had six pick, so I put the cover on like the lottery ticket or whatever. But it wasn't no specific rap. It wasn't no none of that, bro. You didn't think too much into it. Nothing. I, I just knew it was gonna go viral. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. I knew it was gonna go viral instantly, but it wasn't no these the hottest the deal dub, nope, it wasn't that. You know what I mean? These are all my partners, right. you know what I mean? We all was chilling. And I told them one by one to do it. You know what I mean? I had all of us right there. I mean, and that shit is dope because I, I did something like that with uh, Dallas Brass Everybody. Unfortunately, yeah. that was like, you know what I'm saying? Before Say Cheese was what it was. Hold on, do you know when you dropped it who I said went the hardest? You said, you said Mo3. Right. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it won't be no. And, and at that time, I don't think he was on there. Like you was, he was the last person to get on there, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So they were like, why y'all ain't put? Why y'all ain't put? Why y'all ain't put? Why y'all? I'm why y'all ain't put? Why y'all? Yeah, he did that. Yeah, he killed that. Listen to it. You know what I mean? I go to it and play it. Whoever. You know what I mean? I did that. You know what I mean? This created a drift between Freddie and Three, who have known each other since middle school. And as far as Three was concerned, Freddie had chosen his side. This resulted in Mo Three pulling up the Trap Boy Freddie's clothing shop and confronting him in this video that Freddie posted to his IG. Mo Three responded by saying he was trying to throw hands, but Trap Boy Freddie was scared to put his gun down. Trap Boy responded by saying this was the day Mo Three got his wrong free pass revoked. This was clearly escalating, and this all culminated in a terrible incident that took place in Fort Worth, Texas, not long after. Remember earlier in the story when I told y'all three had signed to Epic Records, but the deal fell apart only two months after he signed? That happened because of this next event. So Mo3 was on fire at this point in his career and had already passed where Go Yayo was at his peak. He was arguably the biggest artist in Texas at this point. He was having a birthday bash and he brought everybody from his hood out to celebrate in Fort Worth. Apparently, he was on stage when Yayo approached and asked to get up there with him, but instead of three letting it happen, he refused Yayo's request, telling him he was kicking it with his homies instead. They left this venue and headed to Club Phantom in Fort Worth for an after party party. Now, Three is from Dallas and Yayo is from Fort Worth, so Mo Three is on Yayo's home turf. According to eyewitness testimony, when Three and his entourage got to the location, Yayo was already in attendance, and the crowd started turning up in a violent way, clearly mad that Three had showed up to the venue. Apparently, him and Yayo exchanged some words with each other, and after the exchange, Three's manager, Rainwater, attempted to get him and his crew out of the club. They was being escorted out by club personnel, but according to Three's homie, No Flaw Peach, instead of taking them out the club, they escorted them to a fenced-in patio. From here, a group of people could be seen rushing Mo Three's click, and during the chaos, shots ended up being fired. That happened fast. Like I just remember, you know, just pop off Three and Yayo yeah, get into it, and uh, you know, they passed their words. Yo, yo, bro wanted to get on the stage with him. Three was like, I'm cooling with my knife. This like one of the first shows where three had before it's like Hamilton Park, the Crooks, you know, like all of us together. And it was his birthday bash, mm. so he tell him like, ah, you know, I'm chilling with my hood, you know, I'm f them today or whatever with the whoops. So three do one show at one club, we go to another club. Next thing you know, the whole four work standing up in that on tables, 
you know, they cracking, talking, they with the wooth, but three playing it come, you know what I'm saying? But he really trying to think the situation through. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we outnumber, we in they city, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we boom, 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 you know. Ryan come back like, come on, we finna go. Or whatever, so we walk into the door and I'm telling them like, nah, bro, this the wrong door. We supposed to be going that way. Yeah. And they walk us to like a big patio with like, like a 12 foot fence. Mm. Next thing you just see a whole bunch of rushing the door then. I don't know, I'm, I'm hitting the gate by this time. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was a setup for sure, for sure. No Fly Peach claims they were being set up, but that still remains unknown. This incident resulted in one man losing his life. Nobody was arrested for it at first, but one month later, after meeting with his parole officer, Mo3 was booked on suspicion of being involved. He wasn't booked at the parole office though. Instead, they raided his house at 10 o'clock in the morning and took him into custody. He was promptly released after he posted a $100,000 bill. This is where the beef with Mo3 really started at, but after the first shooting that took place at this club, it opened a window for even more violence to occur. And while 3 was making this come up that we covered earlier, he started to endure some serious losses. While all of the rappers in the area might have despised Mo3, he was able to make friends in other sectors of entertainment. One of his good friends was a man named Roy Lee. Roy Lee was a comedian out of Dallas who gained a following posting short comedy clips to various social media sites. Mo3 used to watch his clips and one day he reached out to him in the DMs and the two men met up and instantly hit it off, becoming good friends, hanging out all the time and kicking it. However, Roy Lee would find himself being wrapped up in the drama and unintentionally propelling Mo3's beef forward by about 10 years. This started after Roy Lee started posting clips of him making fun of Yellow Beezy and it went on for a while. It came to a head at the King of Diamonds Club when Beezy spotted Roy Lee and sucker punched him in the face. Roy Lee responded to it all in this video where he challenges Yellow Beezy to a boxing match. Roy, what the f is you over here doing? Getting ready for the fight, $12,000. Boy, you as dumb as you look. $12,000 trying to get ready for it. What fight you getting ready for, war? For the fight, trying to get this shit out no, my Ain't chest. nobody gonna fight. He ain't gonna fight? No. So you telling me he's a grown man, he ain't gonna step up to I the plate? I don't know about none of that. I just know he haven't responded. I've been watching. Man. It's not a fight, you childish. Let's How stop. am I childish? <laughs> you sure. boy, come on. I'm ready to knock some more. What are you knocking now? I'm ready you... to knock Come on. I'm ready to win. The winner, Roy Lee, the comedian. Knocked out the Rapper, Boy. why I can't do that? Why I gotta squash something and they the ones jump me? Why I gotta do that? Why okay, they jump you? Let it go. Why I gotta let, let something go? go? Why they saving him like they walked him to church last week? Why? Right. It, man, it. come on, man. Clearly, Roy Lee was having threes back in this situation, and like with most of these stories, it didn't take long for the online antics to translate into real life problems. On Tuesday, September 25th, 2018, Roy Lee was sitting in the parking lot of the Preston Valley Shopping Center when a gunman approached him and opened fire. He hit Roy Lee in the leg or the foot and then he fled the scene. Roy Lee contacted emergency services and was transported to the local hospital. He made some IG live videos talking about what happened and it seemed that everything was okay, but Roy Lee would not make it through recovery. Two weeks after the incident, a blood clot formed as a result and he passed away after having a massive heart attack. The death of Roy Lee escalated this beef to the point of no return. Yella Beezy had been beefing with Roy Lee over Mo3 and when Roy Lee passed away on October 13, 2018, the very next day, October 14, 2018, Yella Beezy would find himself in a crucial situation as well. He was on the highway in his Sprinter van when a car pulled alongside him and let off over a dozen shots. Beezy was hit three times and hospitalized over the incident. When asked if he could ever forgive the person who did it, he said this. If the guys that did it apologize to you, they came no in. Apologizing, there ain't no, there ain't no apologizing. We didn't went too far, there ain't no apologizing. Most I can't see now that shot me. Point blank period. I don't give a f that just me. You not finna come and try to say I'm the n that shot you and think you finna walk away. I'm gonna get my lick back. Ain't no walking away. Nah, ain't no shaking my hand. It's, it's too far, too far gone. I'm gonna shoot at you or you gonna shoot at me on God, on my son. That's it, like, I done ran into the, like, 
that I had the history with. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when none of us hit, you get what I'm saying? So I can shake it. That's cool. Like, I ain't on that shit no more. Actually, pop you. That's a whole deal. Trust me, like, it's a consequence for everything you do. Like, you, what, whatever life you live in, just know, like, you got to be ready for everything. Like, if I'm in tour with anybody, like, they started that shit first. So right. it's going to be they karma when it come from me. You get what I'm saying? Like, clearly, this was past the point of no return. This was further fueled when Mo3 dropped a song titled 219, where he addressed the beef directly and basically admits to shooting Yellow BZ on a record. He didn't stop with this track though, because a month later, he dropped another diss song titled 221, where he addresses the beef again and made his intentions very clear. The bad news is, this energy was met with a terrible response, because less than 10 days later, after he dropped 221, 3 would endure another loss. Mo3 was close to another man in Dallas named James Browning, also known as Bubba. Bubba and 3 have been close since childhood, but less than 10 days after Mo3 dropped that 221 song, Bubba found himself in a dire situation too. Bubba often hung out in front of a gas station in Dallas, and it was well known that he hung out there. He did it so frequently that the owners became friends with him and didn't mind him hanging around. On March 13, 2019, Bubba was in front of that gas station in South Dallas when a white SUV could be seen pulling up beside the store. Two men jumped out of the car, armed, and made their way to the front. Bubba notices the men and tries to run, but the men open fire with automatic rifles. Bubba made it inside the store and all the way to the back, but he was hit and he would fall over and die only moments later. The two men ran back to the vehicle and made their getaway. This loss hit Mo3 even harder than the loss of Roy Lee, but marked the second time close friends of his had been taken away during the midst of this beef. Then, three months later, in July of 2019, Yellow Beezy is booked at an unruly citizen concert in Kansas. Mo3 apparently contacted the promoter of this show and was able to get himself on a ticket. However, after the promoter realized that Mo3 and BZ had beef, they contacted 3 and tried to cancel on him, although Mo3 claims he was never informed of this information. Regardless, when the night came for Yellow BZ to perform, Mo3 can be seen pulling up, and as soon as he stepped on the property, the police arrested him. 3 claims Yellow BZ called the police and had him on the lookout for in case Mo3 showed up but it was unconfirmed if it was BZ or the promoter who contacted authorities. 3 can be heard rapping about this incident on his song titled Let Me Find Out where he claims Yellow BZ was scared to be in the same building as him. It was clear that this beef was not gonna die down. Either way, Mo3 followed all this up by dropping his album Osama that had all of these diss songs on it that included 221, 219, and Let Me Find Out. He continued to release a flurry of songs after this album, and only two months later, in February of 2020, his dual album with Lil Boosie dropped, something Mo3 had waited his whole life to see happen. And even this wasn't enough to make Mo3 slow down. He dropped his Broken Love remix with Kevin Gates, which has since gone on to become platinum, and was the first time Mo3 had ever achieved a level of success with a record like this. But unfortunately, Mo3 would never get to see the heights of his success because he would expect fire before 2020 ever ended. On November the 11th, 2020, Mo3 was in his car on Interstate 35 headed back towards his house after a night with one of his lady friends. Mo3 got on the phone with his manager Rainwater and said he felt like there was a dark colored Chevy Camaro following him while he was still in the neighborhood, which is what prompted him to get onto the interstate. Once on the interstate, he became increasingly paranoid of the car, and according to Rainwater, after a long pause, he heard Mo3 tell him that the car was shooting at him. He brought his car to a complete stop and hopped out. Now what happens next is up to speculation, but the rumor was that 3 stopped the car and got out so he could get to the other side and get in a stash box that stored a gun he had. Mo3 was a felon, so he couldn't legally own a gun, which makes sense as to why he would have one in a stash box. Unfortunately, if that's what he was aiming to do, he was unsuccessful. He ended up running down the highway as a man got out of the black Chevy Camaro chasing him with an automatic rifle in hand and opened fire. Three was hit multiple times and died on the scene. There's footage of it, but out of respect, and I'd like to get monetized on this, I won't show it here, but you can look it up. He was transported to the hospital where he was officially pronounced dead. 
One of his biggest ops, Trap Boy Freddy, can be seen going live within minutes of the incident and addressing what happened, seemingly dropping hints that he knew exactly what was going on. Man, whoever got the freeway blocked out need to get y'all sh** together, dog. God, can't even get on the freeway. Man, law got the freeway blocked off all the way on poke, dog. The f they got going? I'm gonna pop some bottles. It bottle popping time. Half party time. But time. <laughs> Yeah. After Mo3 passed away, they had a visual and a public balloon release party planned for him that went off without a hitch. But even though Mo3 was gone, his beef was still very much alive. Lil Boosie was in attendance for the event, and afterwards, he went to the Red Bird Mall in Oak Cliff to do some shopping. While standing outside, somebody pulled up and opened fire on him, hitting him in the leg and leaving him in a wheelchair for months on end. Another 20 shootings took place in the area the weekend after Mo3 passed away. Trap Boy Freddy even dropped a diss song called Laugh Now after it all went down and it said he isn't gonna stop dissing Mo3 just cause he's dead. There was some good that happened though. Mo3's team put together a posthumous album called Shot Us Forever and dropped it. This included Mo3's biggest song, Outside, which is certified platinum and had a music video to accompany it that was basically footage of Mo3's balloon release party. A real chilling video to watch knowing how this all went down. The album Shot Us Forever was his best performing album of his entire career. It's just unfortunate that he wasn't around to see everything he built when it was at its peak. A story that is becoming all too familiar in the world of hip hop. It's sad to see how it all unfolded for Mo3. Clearly, he was an individual with an immense amount of talent and the wherewithal to make it out of the trenches. He's seen great success throughout his career, but was unable to avoid trouble. From an early age, Mo3 had decided exactly what kind of person he was going to be and chose to be a gangster way before he decided he was going to become a rapper. Despite this, he was able to position himself in a way that allowed him to prosper, but when you carry the streets on your back, eventually it'll become too heavy. It's sad that he didn't even get to see the height of his career. He was bigger in death than in life, and although he was unaware of it, the decisions he made ultimately led to a tragic ending for him and the people closest to him. He put out the energy he got back, and when he was asked about it all, it almost seemed like he knew how this story was going to end, but just didn't care enough to give caution. On the other hand, it was these problems that allowed him the opportunity to record it all and build this career out of it. Without all of the street stuff, who knows if the world would even know who Mo3 is. It's the double-edged sword that is the street life. Mo3 left behind three children and a family who loved and supported and relied on him. And those are the people being most affected by this crime, not Mo3, because he's no longer here. And for me, seeing the devastation cost to the people who had nothing to do with it is the most tragic part of the story but that's the story of mo3 and how it all went down anyways that's it for the video guys if you enjoyed the content be sure to hit the like button subscribe tap the notification bell so you get notified every time i upload a video as always it's been fun rocking with y'all man i'm out